Thanks for having me. Appreciate hey, it. Then. Charles, just want to say thank you for having me here in the dungeon. We're in the Ledger headquarters. This is the kind of technical wizardry going on in the background with the Ledger devices. It's uh, really cool to see everything you have here. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to have you in the dungeon. Uh, as you said, not many people enter the dungeon, and I'm always proud to show what we are doing behind the scenes. So, to the best of my understanding, this is kind of where you take your ledger devices, you break them apart, you attack them, you t check out other competitors' products, see what exploits they have, and so this is kind of where you, it's kind of like your laboratory for the ledger devices. Is, is that kind of right? Yeah, it's totally right. Like the dungeon is first and foremost a security team, and their main mission is to improve the security of our product. And when you are in the security world, there is something you, you know, like uh, security is not something static, and you always have to improve. You, you always have to raise the bar for security. In, or in, in order to raise this bar, uh, you need to try to break your product. At the end, this is always uh, the, be the best way to improve the security of, our, of your product. And this is what we are doing. Day to day, we are uh, trying to find vulnerabilities on our product. And also, we are studying uh, the ecosystem as a whole uh, in order to learn what, what's going on in the ecosystem. And if we can help securing the ecosystem, uh, this, is a, this is a pleasure for us because it's, uh, it's for the good of the ecosystem. Like We need a security. Uh, we want to be the most secure uh, in the ecosystem. This is our, uh, our mission. So. To the best of my understanding, this is kind of where you take your ledger devices, you break them apart, you attack them, you t check out other competitors' products, see what exploits they have, and so this is kind of where you, it's kind of like your laboratory for the ledger devices. Is, is that kind of right? Yeah, it's totally right. Like the dungeon is first and foremost a security team, and their main mission is to improve the security of our product. And when you are in the security world, there is something you, you know, like uh, security is not something static, and you always have to improve. You, you always have to raise the bar for security. And in, in, in order to raise this bar, uh, you need to try to break your product. At the end, this is always uh, the, be the best way to improve the security of, our, of your product. And this is what we are doing. Day to day, we are uh, trying to find vulnerabilities on our product. And also, we are studying uh, the ecosystem as a whole uh, in order to learn what, what's going on in the ecosystem. And if we can help securing the ecosystem, uh, this, is a, this is a pleasure for us because it's, uh, it's for the good of the ecosystem. Like We need a security. Uh, we want to be the most secure uh, in the ecosystem. This is our, uh, our mission. But we also want the ecosystem as a whole to be, to be secure. And I think this word secure you know, has a lot. When, we talk, when put, we talk about secure with software and hardware, I think a lot of people think of some of these things as impenetrable or impossible to break, but there's always different weaknesses and ways things can be broken. Um, what are some of like Ledger's biggest weaknesses? I know this is kind of a weird way to start, but there's ways in which Ledger is more secure than competitors. Um, is there any way that you describe it as like a little bit weaker in some areas? Yeah, you, you have to think uh, the security as a chain and the overall security is as secure as the weakest link in the chain. Makes sense. And this is something we have, we have to have in mind. And when you uh, interact with blockchain, uh, there are different steps and the, the link that we are trying to secure is the link between the user and the, his wallet. This is what, what we are uh, trying to secure. And for that, uh, our, our mission is to secure the, the secret and also the interaction. Because often we, uh, we have in mind the use case where you uh, send your Bitcoin and so on. Uh, it's a quite simple use case. On your device, it's written you are sending this specific amount to uh, this uh, specific address. Uh, but when it comes to uh, doing some complex smart contract interaction, like doing uh, like borrowing and lending on Aave, like this kind of thing, 
uh, you, the, transaction, the transaction that you are about to sign might be a little bit more complex mm -hmm. and for a user it can be uh, difficult to understand. And I think this is where we need to improve at Ledger, making sure like the, the, human, uh, the, the human interaction with the blockchain to be as simple as possible for the user. Because when you sign a hash, frankly, this is difficult to say to understand what will be the consequences of uh, the signature. So if you have a tech savvy user, you will take the transaction, you will decode it on Etherscan or uh, any, uh, anywhere else. But at the end, it's something quite complex. And I think this is why we need to improve, uh, making sure the user experience is as simple as possible. And the user understands very well uh, what kind of interaction it will do and what will be the consequences of signing this transaction. So I think this is where we, uh, we need to improve. It's a little bit more difficult for us because it's on hardware. You have a, a small screen. This is why we are working on stacks in order to uh, give more information to uh, the users. Um, and we, the device is not connected to the internet, so that means you cannot leverage uh, on uh, like um, uh, connected services to uh, help you decode the transaction, this kind of thing. So we have uh, these difficulties, which are al also forces, because your device is not connected, so it's more secure. Um, but I think this is where we, uh, we need to improve, and this is, this is where we are uh, investing a lot. So I really like the way that you put that, where ultimately, you can build the most secure hardware and software in the world, but if you don't communicate that well to your customers and they make a mistake, then they're gonna feel like the, the software let them down or the hardware let them down. So ultimately it's about how people interact with your devices is what matters the most. Yeah, totally, because if we design the most secure solution in the world, but it's so complex that no one uses it, you don't solve any problem. This is something yeah. we have to keep in mind. At the end, this is humans that interact with blockchain and we m must make this interaction as simple as possible. We need to make sure that the user understand what they are doing. And this is not that simple because uh, there's uh, smart contract interaction like lending, borrowing, like the, the protocols themselves are complex. The way uh, they are implemented in a decentralized manner and so on is also uh, not simple at all. And you add on top of this like cryptography, um, uh, cryptographic protocols I'm, uh, I'm an expert in cryptography, so I know wha uh, what it is to do, uh, to do like uh, zero knowledge proof, to do the uh, so digital signature and so on. But my mother, she, she has no idea what it is about. So we need to hide this complexity and, yeah. uh, and give the power to the user when, where they understand they are, what they are doing. Yeah, I think it's funny, like, I mean, I'm certainly, I'm not an engineer. I have to trust that you and others build things in a certain way or have audited the code of open source protocols. So yeah, it's funny with crypto where you've got crypto and Bitcoin where you have this immense amount of complexity. You know, I'm not sure if there's any one person who fully understands everything there is around how ASICs are built to how to send a Bitcoin transaction to Bitcoin's game theory. There's a lot of people that I think are pretty close to understanding all of it, but it's quite difficult. And then you take all the other cryptos as well. And understanding all of that is incredibly complex and you've got hardware devices and you've got software and all these different layers. And for the common person, I think it feels like, as John Oliver puts it, Bitcoin is everything you don't understand about computers with everything you don't understand about money. <laughs> it's, it's this weird overlap of like a lot of complexity and a lot of complexity. Yeah, totally. That, that's true. And um, I'm an expert in cryptography. I worked a lot in uh, also hardware and so on. Uh, economy and money I learned and but even on the technical stuff cryptography and so on I'm learning every day so uh, I, I can't imagine no, uh, someone who is not expert in, <laughs> in one of those domains this is really di difficult and I think this is part of our mission at Ledger to educate people to help them understand uh, what is at stake and uh, how to interact with those um, new things uh, which are Bitcoin and, and crypto in general. Um, I wanted to ask you a question around the hardware. So you all in the dungeon, you all take your chip, you take other people's chips and you, and you take your devices and try to pull them apart and find their weak points. And in front of us, we have some types of, uh, what, what is this exactly? I, so I, I, think, I think I'd say the wrong thing. <laughs> so this is a, an electronic board that we called a scaffold and this is literally a scaffold so this is really for debugging purpose so when we uh, get a device uh, maybe a competitor device or our devices 
we, we can simply extract the circuit uh, from it and we will uh, use this board to understand how it works. We, we can debug exactly as we want, we can send, send the signal we want, we, we can measure the signal uh, exactly as we want. So it's really a scaffold, like you, you are building your attack with this kind of, uh, of card. So I'm going to show you an attack which, uh, which we did on Trezor T for example. So the main idea is that we have a Trezor uh -huh. and then we remove from it the microcontroller which contains the encrypted seed. Mm. Okay, and we use fault injection to dump this firmware okay. and already the seed is stored in, the, uh, in this firmware which is encrypted. So the first step is to dump the firmware from the microcontroller okay. using fault injection. So we launch the um, attack. Okay. Okay, so we are trying to access to the memory and trying to inject faults. And once the fault is succeeded, we are able to dump the overall flash or the, the encrypted seed. And after that, there is a, another step to decrypt the okay. seed. Very cool. 0.7 seconds. Oh, it takes less. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So for like a non-technical person like me, this is like uh, you're in biology class and you have like a cell on like a little slide and you're kind of looking at it and you can poke it, poke it, but you're, at, you're kind of examining it and seeing everything that comes in and out of it. Exactly. You can, uh, if, if you want to compare with cell, uh, if this cell in, it is in this specific environment, it will uh, react this way. Uh, um, so we are extracting a cell, we are putting it in this specific environment and we are measuring what happens. And, and this, is, uh, this is really what this uh, board is for, like uh, doing a, a lot of different experiments on a specific uh, part of uh, the circuit and, uh, and so on. So this is, uh, this is why we built this uh, card. And uh, this is open source. Uh, if, you are, um, if you are deep in electronic, if you want to uh, make your own lab, if you want to uh, to build your scaffold, it is open source on our, on our GitHub.